Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial where we're, today we're going to learn about how to auto-activate granted abilities instead of having to wait for some sort of input event in order to activate the ability. Uh, so here in front of us we have our character that we've been developing on our uh, Hero Project uh, live stream, and we have an ability that lets us sprint. And what we have also now is the ability to, when we use our sprint ability, we apply a gameplay effect, and within that gameplay effect, we grant an ability. And normally, when we do that with the gameplay ability system, it needs to wait for some sort of trigger event or some sort of tag event, something like that. Uh, whereas what we're going to add today is to allow this uh, granted ability to automatically activate, just so it gives you an extra layer of um, control over what your abilities do. So what we're going to see here is I'm going to sprint, and in the top left corner you're going to see a print string of saying auto-activate ability, something like that. So auto-activate. So that lets us know that it's working. It's a very simple tutorial, um, and we're not going to go too deeply into making it look nice. We're just going to be able to add a parameter, that, a boolean, that tells us, yeah, this, this ability can be automatically granted, and if that is true, uh, have it, you know, automatically activate. So that's all it's going to be. We're going to recreate this. So let's get started. Okay, to get started on automatically granting an ability, we first have to look at the gameplay ability class. Um, if you aren't sure, at this point, we are using the gameplay ability system plugin. Uh, this tutorial is not going to show you how to install that plugin. It's under the assumption that you have everything set up with the gameplay ability system. Um, if you aren't sure how to use the gameplay ability system, how to install it, how to set everything up, uh, there's going to be a link in the description to a really good GitHub project source with a lot of good documentation by Tranic. So definitely check that out. But right now, we're under the assumption you're at the point where you need to know how to automatically grant an ability. So let's open up the gameplayability.h file that we have open here in front of us. And we want to look at the function on avatar set. And the reason why we want to look at on avatar set is because in the gameplayability.cpp for this function, there is a developer comment saying projects may want to initiate passes or do other begin play type of logic here. So basically this function kind of serves as your begin play for your uh, ability. So on begin play, we want to try to activate it if our certain Boolean variable is set to true. Uh, so we're going to override this function and we're going to create a unique Boolean in our own gameplay ability uh, inherited class and basically say, hey, if this Boolean is true, try to activate the ability. So that's all this comes from. It's very pretty straightforward. And this is very luckily for, for me and in our Discord server where uh, one of our members uh, learned how to do this and he shared it with me and I thought I'd make a tutorial on it. Uh, I'll shout him out at the end. So let's go ahead and actually uh, code this. Here I have my own uh, inherited gameplay ability class called uh, Hero Gameplay Ability. As you can see, it inherits from gameplay ability. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is create the override uh, for the on avatar set. So we're going to do it under the private access modifier. We're going to do virtual void on avatar set, and here's the same signature, and also add override. Next, we're going to create a Boolean parameter called B activate when granted. So it's going to be a U property uh, under the protected access modifier. That's going to have uh, edit defaults only. We're going to create a category for it. I'm calling it hero gameplay ability. And we're going to use two uh, unique uh, meta tags, the first being display name. And we're going to call it activate ability when granted. All that meta tag does is that within blueprints, uh, we're going to see this property labeled as activate ability when granted instead of it being be activate when granted. And the other meta tag here, advanced display, allows us to put this parameter um, within the default settings of our blueprint, but it's going to be hidden within those little arrows, like the little down drop arrow, so it's not going to be shown automatically. It's going to be what they call advanced display. Uh, I'll show you more about it when we actually compile and take a look at it. So now we have our override function declaration, and we have our Boolean. So now what we can do is actually create the function on avatar set in our CPP class. But to create the function, right-click on it, create uh, definition, and it'll automatically do it. 
Uh, you might have Visual Studio Assist or anything that'll help you do that, but just create the function as so. And whenever you override a function from a parent class, the first thing to do in most cases, if not all cases, is to call super on that function. So we're gonna do super on avatar set and pass in actor info and spec. Uh, this is to make sure that the parent class function gets called. Next, we can check if our Boolean is true with the, by using an if statement. And then we can call uh, on actor info on the ability system component, uh, try activate ability. And the reason why we're, call, we're calling a bool, we're making a variable for bool activated ability uh, because uh, the function try activate ability returns a Boolean. So in order to use this function the way we are, we just have to store it into a variable. We really don't really need to use activated ability for anything, but that's just the way we're declaring it. So we got our actor info. We're getting the ability system component. And in the ability system component, we have a function uh, try activate ability. And it requires uh, a, a F gameplay ability spec handle. And luckily for us, um, on avatar set uh, passes in an F gameplay ability spec. So all we need to do is get the spec handle, and we can do that with spec dot handle. Now that we have our on avatar set function done, literally it's all this is is calling the super on avatar set, passing in the same parameters, then checking if our be activated when granted boolean is true and then calling from the actor info ability system component. Basically, actor info just tells us the information about the owning actor of this ability, and we're getting that actor's ability system component, and on that ability system component, we're calling try activate ability using the handle from the returned F gameplay ability spec passed into the on avatar set function. And of course, we're making it under a bool activated ability because try activate ability returns a Boolean handle. So now we can just uh, hit F5. It'll, I've already compiled this, so it should open up quickly for us. But now we got to go and create our granted ability. And it's going to be super simple. It's just going to do a print string. And I already have a directory here, hero and abilities. I'll create a new folder, just granted abilities. And then I can right click blueprint class and I have my hero ability class here. And I can call it HGAP for granted ability and then just granted ability test. Now we can double click this. And under our defaults, I can scroll down, there's this hero gameplay ability section. And this is the arrow I'm talking about, like hide advanced. So right now under hero gameplay ability, there aren't any not advanced parameters, so we can't really hide it and unhide it. But that's what that adv display advanced uh, meta tag does in, uh, in our ability right here. So advanced display. So that's what that does. And you'll notice the display name as well, activate ability when granted. So we know all of that's working. We know that's good. So we just want to make it true because <laughs> this is our granted ability. And then on event activate ability, let's just print string and we'll do auto activate ability. And then we could just end ability. You don't have to do anything more than that right now. Um, just This is just proof of concept at this point. So we have that done, but now we need a gameplay effect to grant this ability. Um, and for my project that I have here, I have a sprint ability. And the sprint ability is activated whenever I press down shift. And when I press down shift, I apply this gameplay effect for sprinting, which modifies movement parameters, but that's irrelevant. What we want to look at here is granted abilities. Typically, it's located at the bottom of the gameplay effect. And we can add a new one. And then under ability, we can find our granted ability. So H HGAP granted ability test. We can leave everything else alone, like removal policy. We, we don't really need to worry about that. So now we can compile. And now if we play and I uh, use shift to sprint, we see auto activate ability. And sprint, sprint, sprint. And we see it being printed. And if I go back to my granted ability and I make it false, we won't see this print string happen. So that's it. 
uh, to recap, we have uh, only one main function here on avatar set. And again, we're doing this because in the gameplay.cpp, gameplayability.cpp, we have a developer comment from Epic saying this, this function should be used to initiate passives or do other begin play type of logic here. So that's pretty much what we're doing. So in our inherited hero gameplay ability class, we're overriding it. And we also create a Boolean that controls whether or not the ability that we're talking about can be automatically activated when granted. And then in our function, of course, we call it the super on avatar set, passing in this information. And then we check if our Boolean is true. And if so, we get the actor info, we get the ability system component, and we try to activate the ability using the input spec handle. So we have our const f gameplay spec, and our spec, we can pull the handle from it. And then we create in, um, in our project, we create the ability, we set this to true for our Boolean, and then in our sprinting gameplay effect, we grant this ability right here. And then when we sprint, we get that print string. So with this, you can do a couple of different, you can do a lot of things really. Um, so say for example, I don't know, you unlock the ability to sprint, but you also unlock an additional ability to, I don't know, uh, deal damage as soon as you start sprinting, right? Say you cause an explosion around your initial position when you start uh, when you start sprinting. You can do that with this. So you can have your sprint, and then on when, the, when you use the sprint and it grants this uh, passive ability, um, you grant this ability and then you, you cause an explosion around you, you find the actors around you, you'll deal damage to your enemies or the environment. And that's just one example. Uh, so I hope you learned a lot. Um, I know I did. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks again for watching this tutorial. A special shout out to Codebreaker Umbra on my Discord channel for showing me how to do this in our uh, gameplay ability. If you aren't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, please subscribe. Uh, at the bottom, you'll see all my social media. We have a Discord channel. That will be in the link in the description. Uh, subscribe for YouTube. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Dev, uh, at Dev Level Design. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Devin Level Design, Instagram, Jevin's Cherries, and also follow me on Twitch for more live streams uh, at Devin Sherry. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!